think that the Barbados Cricket Association has done a wonderful job uh, over the last uh, umpteen years in relation to cricket. They've always had very good structures, started from the primary school and uh, they dominated into the under 15, under 17, under 19 setup. I sat on the Barbados Cricket Association board for six years, so I had an in depth knowledge of what was going on. And I think that the cricket is, is well structured and the interest is cricket. And you like look at if you look at the, the West Indies team, a lot of the players yes are from Barbados, and, and that is something I think that is good, because they, they they know each other well and they've played with each other for such a long time. And Barbados continues to lead. I believe other territories like Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, Jamaica, they are also doing well uh, as well, but they're not doing as well as they should be. When you look at the Wimbers and Leeward Islands, they continue to struggle. So I think it comes down to sharing the knowledge. The Barbados Cricket Association, when they go to their West Indies Cricket Board meetings, they need to share that knowledge and hope that it will come down the line to help the other territories that are not as strong. I think it has to start at a professional cricket league. I think that the franchises, the franchise system that has been in existence now going into three years in the West Indies for first class cricket, then they, they need to they need to from that era they need to get tough. The, the coaches need to get the players mentally and physically prepared for the next level of cricket because after perfect four day cricket is into test level test match cricket which is five days and it has to start at the four day cricket level you can even go a little further down i started at the under 19 level as well where we get that aggression we saw it the other day in our under 19 world cup champions we saw some aggressive fast bowling from alzari joseph and shimar hold and stuff like that we saw aggressive cricket the captain shamrock he was also aggressive in his captaincy and that is what we want to see coming out and coming back into our cricket so how do we get those guys? Those guys don't have to come into the professional cricket league, which is the four-day setup, and bring that same intensity into the four-day setup, which will help them to move their careers forward into Test match cricket. Yes, before the before the senior players in, in the, the, the Chris Gills, the Dwayne Bravos, the Pollers, the Dwayne Smiths, the Andrea Russells, and those guys. I know we've lost Jerome Taylor. It is a big hole for West Indies cricket, and it's sad. But that is the luck of the, the coin. You know, those guys have. It saddens me that they're not playing. For one reason or another, their selection issues, not playing enough cricket in the, in, in the region as well is another issue because the board, they have their criteria for selection. If you don't play regional cricket, you, you know, you're going to lose out the opportunity of playing for West Indies. And also Lyndon Simmons, a young man who decided he, you know, he will play his, T20, his career as a T20 cricketer. So all these guys that are missing from the, the, the main setup in the West Indies team has left a hole, but has also given the younger guys an opportunity. And it's for those young guys who, who have the opportunity now to grab it with both hands and use it. Yes, you might not be as talented as a Chris Gill or a Pollard or a Bravo or a Simmons or even a Dwayne Smith. But at least you have an opportunity where you can showcase it. And if you really work hard at your skills, you can become just as good as those guys, even better. But it calls for hard work and dedication.